I want to talk about how heat affects electric scooters. Um, so if you're in a cold climate and you're riding your standard Xiaomi M365 scooter um, and it's a cold climate, your batteries will get warm. They'll probably go up to 30, 40 degrees Celsius. Um, the controller will get very hot. Uh, so in this scooter here is the battery. And then right there... Uh, affixed to the roof uh, just there right there that's actually where the control board is screwed up to and there is uh, the control board is actually mounted in an aluminium case and there is a uh, heat um, thermal paste uh, where it's screwed up to the roof of the scooter so that actually makes the scooter um, a heat sink that's actually useful uh, for dissipating heat. So what you want to do is make sure that the thermal paste is um, actually good, it's fresh. You can get some cheap thermal paste from AliExpress and just cover it in thermal paste because they don't cover the whole surface in, in it. Uh, so therefore that's not helping. Uh, there, are, Of course there is no airflow inside there, that's a sealed unit. Uh, but at the very least um, the things that are going to get hot on the control board are the MOSFETs, M-O-S-F-E-T-S. Uh, so if you don't know what they are, Google that. Uh, you want to try and get as much heat away from those as possible. So if you take out the board and you uh, put a little bit of thermal paste on, right on that, right on the MOSFETs, just where they sit on the, um, it's like a tape they use, uh, tape that um, they run. It's like a brown tape and it just goes under all of the MOSFETs. That, uh, you want to put some thermal paste there too. And when you put the um, control board back in your scooter, uh, don't put the glass case on the roof. That will help a little bit. So, the you know, eight, nine out of ten times, the issue that uh, causes your scooter to break is the control board. You can order a new one for $30 uh, Australian, $30. Um, from AliExpress and just make sure it's a reputable seller with four or five stars out of five. Uh, okay, so moving on, the of course the battery gets 30, 40 degrees, not terrible, but the ideal operating temperature for a lithium battery is uh, under 25 C. Uh, that's really really hard. The, the only way you're going to get that is if you live in a cold climate and the batteries are outside and there's a constant breeze on them. That's, uh, you know, but when they're being used, they will warm up and they'll suddenly go up to 30, 40, maybe 50 degrees. Maybe. If you're in a hot climate, they'll probably touch 40, 50. Uh, so the batteries, ideally, you can maybe install some sort of fan in there that would just keep a little bit of breeze going through um, so you can figure out how you can run some air through this is a hollow all the way through there and then they install stuff there so potentially somebody could fit a fan uh, mm, fan unit somewhere here and it just pumps air through there exits through holes or something that's up to you but basically the batteries are there they don't get too hot as on a standard uh, M365 scooter the control board does would benefit from some sort of cooling. Uh, there are probably a few ways you could do that, but um, that will inevitably break one day on your scooter. And you might get 500 miles, or you might get 1,000 miles, or you might get 300, 200 miles, but it will break eventually uh, a lot quicker if you're in a hot climate. Uh, the batteries will probably be fine the whole time. The only issues are you might have a broken connector along the batteries, um, but that's not through heat or anything, that's just from use, and uh, that's not really an issue. The motor on the wheel, basically a lot of these electric scooters share uh, a motor uh, in the wheel, and it's kind of the same whether it's 250, 300, 350 watts. So but the what they mean is that's what you can run through it constantly, and it will get hot enough uh, but not too hot, it won't get it dangerously hot, it won't break it um, if you run 350 watts to it. So what you can do is uh, uh, yeah, so 
with this battery charged up to 42 volts, it puts out through the controller there to the motor uh, about 8 or 9 amps, I think. Um, that comes out at 300 watts-ish, and um, that gets the motor to X amount of uh, X degrees, so it doesn't get too hot. Um, if you put in the controller for a uh, M365 Pro, which you can get, it's just slightly better MOSFETs and a big capacitor, um, that will produce more heat, so um, you need to figure out some better way of cooling that, um, or just accept that it will eventually break and you'll have to replace it. And also, the motor will just run a little bit hotter, but basically, that puts out more amps, like 10, 11 amps, something like that. And that raises the wattage of your scooter from uh, 300, 350-ish to 500-ish. That's basically what's going on there. That's that's all that's happening. You can, if you look at my old uh, video from last year, uh, description below, that's where the link is. Uh, I, you know, I installed a VESC controller so the batteries were all around the bottom I just sort of stuck tons of batteries there and I ran wires up the shaft and right on top I installed that's not focusing yeah right on top I installed uh, the VESC there so it's always being hit by air and VESC is just basically a type of controller you can get uh, get them on AliExpress for like a hundred dollars you know they produce either 30 amps or 100 amps something like that and it's a matter of just plugging it in they uh, you can go on the computer tap a few buttons and you just tell it how many amps do you want to run to your motor and provided that your battery will supply those amps it will allow it to get to your controller so if you have enough battery packs and there's enough uh, enough cells in there and it will produce say 80 amps or 90 amps or 70 amps you can just tell it so as I did I ran 70 amps so the battery put loads of power in there that would have got the battery very hot but the cells were able to do that the controller would um, produce a lot of power send it through the phase wise to the motor and basically uh, it would run the motor perfectly fine but essentially the motor would get up to temperature and then keep going and you'd have to sort of be very on top of that but the motor is a hell of a lot hotter inside than what it feels like when you're just touching it so I run 70 amps through my motor and that was kind of uh, too much eventually it burnt the motor out but you can use if you go on Facebook marketplace or something like that um, you can get the Segway uh, you know, you can get these hoverboards that people give away basically for free, and or they sell them for thirty dollars or something. And in them, you know, they've got a big thirty-six amp uh, volt battery, and they've got um, two motors, the basically the innards of uh, the windings, the innards of these motors. So if you need a new motor and you don't want to buy one because they're expensive, you can actually just get one of those hoverboards. And if you're running more power and you bust your motor from having 50, 60, 70, 100 amps, uh, it's fun to have a couple of thousand watts of power, but uh, it, I mean, it really is quite good actually, but uh, you will break something. Uh, you can cheaply get the innards of your motors. Um, they're very, they're wound, very complex inside so if you wanted to rewind them that's quite hard so probably don't recommend doing that um, s safely I'm about 90 100 kilograms and I could run reliably about 30 amps and that didn't really get too hot but I reckon the best thing to do with your standard scooter if you're just gonna stick on a new control board and uh, you want to choose the amount of power just put 10 or 15 amps through with your 36 volt battery and I think that should be reliable that probably won't break unless you're going up hills constantly but uh, you know that's uh, these are my thoughts on just keeping your scooter healthy ish uh, and just just letting you know a little bit about what I've learned uh, running them hot basically um, 
yeah, please give a like if you enjoyed the video or if you learned a couple of things. And any questions, just put them below. I do reply to pretty much every comment, um, unless my video gets hundreds of thousands of views, and in which case I may not because I've spent my life commenting. But I do basically try and read and help people out. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Maybe subscribe if you like the look of my other videos. And uh, take care.